Hey, what's up guys? It's me and I'm coming at you from Los Angeles, California actually. Welcome to my new home for the next week. I'm in a beautiful hotel room and uh, I'm out here just working on yet another project. So of course stay tuned and uh, you'll see what's going on here pretty soon. But uh, I want to talk about some of the questions that are coming in and uh, I'll be handling them from of course here in the evenings because I'm going to be really busy working during the days. But, so I'm actually, also, because I don't have a printer, I get to, uh, I get to read these off of my trusty Blackberry. So, thank you for bearing with me, and uh, let's go ahead and get down into it. Now, uh, this is actually a really good one. I think it's highly applicable, especially because of the current conditions that I'm in, and it's about traveling and, of course, getting the right protein sources while we're traveling. And I know this is a huge issue for a lot of us out there, and especially those of us who are on the go, or those of us who are traveling all the time, of course. So um, here we go. From, this is actually from Brian. I have a question about whether getting a majority of my protein from protein shakes is a good idea. Now, during my days off from work, I get my protein from both shakes and from other sources such as chicken, beans, nuts, etc. Now, as far as my work professional life go, I'm an airline pilot and eat and to eat as healthy and as inexpensively as possible, I carry the majority of my food with me on my trips. All right, I got a really cool story for you guys also, so I'll tell you right after this about airline pilots. Okay, so I try to avoid eating in airport restaurants. I know, completely, and good call on that one. Um, I try to avoid that as much as possible because health-wise, it can be a disaster, yeah, and it gets expensive too. I'm limited to mostly non-perishable foods, and I limit it to the foods that I can bring with me. Uh, so I do bring plenty of protein powder with me and get uh, at least a couple of shakes per day. When traveling, I get most, if not all, of my daily protein requirements from shakes. Is this good or bad? I prefer eating natural sources of protein, such as chicken, but with my lifestyle, it ain't always realistic. All right, Brian, great question, and I'm really glad that you brought this up. Now, first and foremost, really, when it comes down to it, um, I'm guessing that your goals maybe just be, they might be health and wellness, maybe just to maintain your muscle, so look, on the bright side, at least you're getting your daily protein requirements. Now, of course, it's coming from one source, so if you're only getting your protein requirements from one source, it means you're probably gonna be slightly deficient in some vitamins and minerals, as is like well, such as the, the vitamins and minerals that you'd be getting from other sources. So, of course, if you're getting your, your protein requirements from your whey proteins, then you're probably not going to be getting all of your B vitamins and your copper and your zinc and your phosphorus that you'd be getting from, say, meat sources or beans or nuts. So, talking about the whole, the whole travel thing, you know, really, we do the best that we can. Of course, you know, I've been traveling all day today. Last week, or a week and a half ago, as in New York, a week before that, I was back here in Los Angeles, so running around all over the place, well, guess what? I've got, hold on, I've got my stack system here. Now, of course, talking about those non-perishable foods, when I travel, I have it full of a lot of whey protein. So, of course, I got all my whey protein here. Now, because I was doing some traveling in the airport, I swung into one of those travel stores, you know, just like the regular, the newsstand, and it's got all of your snacks and the books and all that other stuff in there. And those of you who've been to an airport, I'm sure you can uh, sympathize, but there is nothing good to eat there, except I found a golden nugget in there, and here we go. Raw almonds. That is the best we could do. No joke. I grabbed two big old things of water because I had to hydrate myself because you dehydrate yourself on the airplane. Brian, I'm sure you know this better than anybody, especially being a pilot, so you're probably pushing a lot of water up there. But as far as the foods that we can actually get in the stores around there, raw almonds is the best thing I could find next to maybe some of those uh, Nature Valley granola bars, which is it's kind of like the, the lesser of all the evils there. Every other thing in there, besides uh, gum, uh, it was really high in processed carbohydrates, it was high in fat, it was, they're basically high in all the stuff that we really don't want to eat, the things that we want to avoid. So of course I got that, I get stocked up on my, my whey proteins and you know, I, I actually swung by a grocery store on the way and grabbed a bunch of apples for the trip. And so when we're talking about non-perishable foods, true, I know and you're, you're getting, at least you're getting your protein requirements and this is not a bad thing at all. I'm pushing probably when I travel, at least three to four shakes a day especially when I'm jamming and I got a lot going on, 
same thing, at least every two and a half to three hours, I'm pushing a shake, I'm getting my protein requirements because the last thing I want to do is be consuming muscle and, and actually start to lose muscle while I'm traveling. So very important. We put a lot of time and effort into this stuff, so we really want to be able to, to maintain that muscle, get those protein requirements. Okay, so you're not getting it from your other sources. So one thing that I, I would recommend Granted, our bodies really are meant to absorb all of our vitamins and minerals from real whole food, but this is where a multivitamin really can come in handy. We're just not able to get the vitamins and minerals that we're, we're getting from, especially considering our diets nowadays and the soil that everything's grown from. We just can't quite get all the vitamins and minerals that we need. So a multivitamin really is going to help you out a lot. From there though, especially if you're drinking a lot of shakes, the one thing that you probably want to do is that whenever I have a shake, I always have some kind of whole solid food with it. So if I'm gonna have a shake, I might have an apple. I might actually snack on some of these raw almonds. Or, and it's true about those, those airport restaurants, they're insanely expensive, but if you can, try to swing in there, maybe grab a salad with the dressing on the side. So at least you can get your ton of vitamins and minerals from your, from your veggies. So um, just some, some quick tips out there. If you are gonna get your protein, once again, we're talking about a liquid source of food. I really want to expand the stomach. I want to get that mechanical expansion in there. It's just going to, once again, we're talking manipulation. It's going to trigger the body, increase metabolic rate, increase the thermic effect of feeding by that mechanical expansion. So if you're going to have something liquid, try to get something solid with it. Um, now, a little side note, something that most of you probably don't know much about me, but I actually grew up in a pilot family. My dad's a pilot. He was a fighter pilot in the military. Grew up idolizing him, and I actually got my, my pilot's license when I was 17 years old, and I flew all through college. I got my instrument, my commercial ratings. I was actually a flight instructor. Most of you don't know this. I was a flight instructor for a couple of years while I was putting myself through college with exercise physiology, of course. So flying was my other passion, and I actually couldn't decide if I wanted to be an airline pilot or go into the health and fitness fields. But of course, health and fitness, that's my true and, and my, I wouldn't say my one and only passion, but that is really, that's my dream. I love doing what I do, obviously. And, um, but you know what, flying has still always been, you know, tugging at the heartstrings just a little bit. So I'll get back into flying maybe. Um, hopefully in a, a decade or two, I might be able to get my own airplane. But anyway, I love flying. I've traveled all my life. And so especially trying to tie health and fitness in with the travel world, um, it's a very difficult thing, especially for those travelers out there. I know you can sympathize, but just a little tidbit of information on me. And hopefully that gave you guys a little bit of good insight to some of the things that you can bring when you're, of course, traveling and you're on the road and you're jamming and you got stuff to do. And of course, we really do want to maintain those protein requirements for the day. So Brian, thank you for writing in. Great question. Hope that helped out. Don't freak out about it when you're on the road. Just get those protein requirements, but when you get home, start eating those real whole foods again. Of course, you're just going to get a lot more vitamins and minerals from them. So thanks for everything, guys. I hope you had a wonderful week. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you from here on Monday. See you guys.